Uh, National Affairs columnist Anthony Fury joins us now on the on the Ford story, the Ford story, the wind story. There are so many strands to pull the here. The Tory story. The Tory story. There's, you know, we could talk political science. Uh, you know, council versus a mayor. And, uh, I, I, and I can ra- I want to wrap it all up. Can you do into, that? Can I can you? wrap it all okay. up into one big bow. I want to preface this by saying in my 2010 columns in the National Post, I did not endorse Rob Ford. I haven't been too keen on him. And I think mm-hmm. the past few weeks he has given voters some good uh, good fuel to suggest maybe you don't want to reelect the guy in 2014. But oh, Hold on. Just before we start, who did you endorse that back then? All right, forget it. Okay, carry on. Sorry, I interrupted you. I also once voted for Stephen LeDrew for mayor of Toronto. That's that's another interesting angle. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. But what's going on here, everybody, everybody is showing a total disdain Mm -hmm. for the general rules of democracy right now, and they are trying to rejig the Hmm. game because there's a guy in a position of power who has done no damage, no damage. And all these people, what is the the extraordinary situation Toronto is in? What is Kathleen Wynne talking about? City manager Joe Panichetti, that is an unelected office, not appointed, it's a bureaucrat, he's Mm -hmm. the main bureaucrat. He says Toronto is not in crisis. He sent out press releases. Only one or two media outlets actually ran with that story. Toronto is not in crisis. This guy, Rob Ford, is in crisis. When he first ran in 2010, council pundits who didn't like him said it's not a really big deal that he won because, you know, he's going to flame out anyway and he's just one vote, so we don't care. We're going to get on with our own agenda anyway. And he has flamed out, but he is just one vote. He has flamed out. He is just one vote. And th- these motions that they're putting forward to strip him of his powers. So are we going to do this anytime? What happens if Olivia Chow becomes mayor, but then a bunch of right-wing councillors get voted? Are they going to say, well, this is an extra- extraordinary situation, David. So mm-hmm. we're going to get her out of office right now. I, I, I just, I think it's very dangerous. The voter has the right to throw the bums out. And if Rob Ford, Doug Ford are bums, you toss them out in October. This is a dangerous precedent. Let, let me just say this. All is fair in love, politics, and war. And, and I'll use this analogy. We aired this video last night of uh, a liberal worker in the riding of Burassa taking down an NDP sign. We got the video from an anonymous source. It looked like it was a setup. They put this sign right outside. And, pe- and people are saying to me, oh, come on, that's a setup and whatever. But who cares? It's legal. Taking down the sign is wrong. Same thing here in Toronto at City Council. What the councillors are doing, it's legal, it's in the rules. You want to play politics? Well, this is politics. You know, go ahead and do what you want to do. They too will have to answer to the voters at some point for if they're seem to be overreaching. And I'm telling them it's a very dangerous position and the reason why Mm -hmm. Kathleen Wynne wants the opposition's approval is because she knows if she doesn't have it, she's going to get hammered in places like Scarborough, Guildwood and other writings like that. People who want Wynne to take Ford down. well, right. yeah, people want right. Win to take Ford down. She's not going to do it no. without support of Tim Hudak, Andrew Horvath. Disastrous for her. On yeah. to John Tory. I don't like reading this story that I'm seeing about, oh, 60 people mm-hmm. met from all parties in a back room. I, you know, I have met and I am familiar with John, John Tory John and John Capobianco. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for them. They don't understand what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. They are paving, they are creating the very environment which Ford Nation is a rebellion against. The idea that people from all parties, all walks of life, not all walks of life, all parties, make up this political class who go behind closed doors. And John just said to you on television right now, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly what we said in the meeting. People hear this and they go, so you're saying a bunch of slick lobbyists and consultants meet and determine, predetermine the rules of the game before we get to look at the ballot. They got to be very careful because it's hearing about the perma-small political class set that created the appetite for Ford Nation to begin with. People didn't vote for Rob Ford. They voted They voted for the idea of a regular guy from Etobicoke they voted ag- saying screw you to the political class. They voted against yeah. George Smitherman and John Tory and Olivia Chow, these slick people who turn on the trough for the consultants consultancy fees for their friends and they go okay liberals this year conservative next year we all take turns people said no finally I've had it with this racket because the people in Scarborough, Etobicoke, whatever, they feel that that situation doesn't speak to them. I'm not criticizing John Capobianco for being passionate about civic life and bringing his friends into a boardroom and chatting about it. I'm telling them the optics of this stinks because it creates the idea that they're, you know, they're, they're the power brokers behind the scenes trying to trying to set up the situation. And they are. And, if we, and people resent that. If we think about the polls we've seen on Ford at any point during this, Everybody keeps going, when they see a poll, going, wow, look at the support Rob Ford still has. And, and that it goes scares just, people. It, it does scare people because they go, clearly there is there are people who just, they may not like Rob Ford, the individual, the guy who says these incredibly rude things that must embarrass his wife on television, but they like 
what Ron Ford stands for, which is basically to say screw you to that political class you're talking about. And they feel like regardless of the party, and John Tory would do this too, everybody wants to create these green bean programs, these feel-good programs for special interest groups. Here's a new little levy. Oh, bag tax. We need it. People go, why? We don't need this stuff. Rob Ford, what did he actually do in office? Well, he didn't do too much. And I think people like that because Rob Ford wasn't solving their problems. And when politicians start to solve people's problems, well, they really resent the outcomes. Anthony Fury, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Bye.